We are quickly ushering in the fall season and there's plenty of good books uh, to enjoy. Great to see you. We're now welcoming the owner of the bookmark in Neptune Beach, Thank Rona you. Brindley. And I'm always excited to see you. I'm of always excited to be here. I love your mix of books as always. Let's good. start with your first riveting recommendation. Oh, that's very alliterative. <laughs> um, this one will be in hardback, Lessons by Ian McEwen, but he's one of my favorite authors, so I just couldn't wait. I had to read the advanced copy. This is what he does really well. It's a family drama. He's the author of Atonement for people who will remember that one. So it's a sweeping family drama, starting with traumas of 11-year-old boy sent off to boarding school, taking piano lessons, those are the lessons, um, and his teacher becomes infatuated with him. And so that's his first entree into the world. And then he gets married and has a son, thinks everything's okay, and then his wife abandons him and he worries about his son. Mm -hmm. So it's all these stories going through and it's all set within the world events. So he has this amazing way to get the intimacy of a family within everything from the Cuban Missile Crisis to COVID. So oh, wow. that, you know, reviewers call it a masterpiece and I have to agree and I love the exclamation point after masterpiece. He earned that too. So that's why he's one of your favorite authors. It, it is, absolutely. He never disappoints. Right. And what else you got here? I see. Oh, me and Mr. Wilder. Uh -huh. Mr. Wilder is Billy Wilder, the film director. So this is the story of a young Greek girl who ends up working with him as a translator in making the film Fedora in 1978. And it's 50 years later and she's reminiscing about their time together and his star was kind of on the wane. So it's thinking about what is the purpose of art and what do you do when you know things are going away? Do you just step away gracefully or do you fight to stay in the spotlight? So it's somewhat a historical biography. A little retro, take us yeah. back to the 70s. Absolutely, I love it. right. Okay. Ooh, and this one takes I us see. way back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not just to the 70s, huh? No, this one takes us to the 1550s. Oh. So that's not even the 1570s. We don't even make it to that. Um, this is the story of Lucretia de' Medici, who gets married off at 15 years old, very young, not really ready to leave home. Mm -hmm. And she gets married off. It's a political marriage, and she's supposed to, you know, solidi solidify um, relationships and produce an heir. Okay. And she dies very young. And the question is, this is a mystery. Did her husband kill her, or did she die of natural causes? Ooh. So this All is right. the author of Hamnet. So people who remember that. Have to read to find that, out. Read to find out. Okay. I like it. This got my attention, of course. Uh, we got the natural history. Natural history. These mm -hmm. are six connected stories by Andrea Barrett, and she does sets everything within the world of nature and science. And it deals with themes like friendship and motherhood and those great tensions we have in life. Do you stay home or do you go off and become ambitious and conquer? So many decisions. Wait, so <laughs> many decisions. And they all have consequences, so you have to think about them pretty clearly, right? Very. So she's exquisite. Very nice. And how about, uh, boy, this, this is interesting. What do we have from Alice here? Alice this Bean. Daisy Darker. This is a mystery. You can tell by the title. And this is Nana's having her 80th birthday. And she lives in this Gothic house uh -huh. on an island where when the tide comes in, they're isolated for eight hours. And so Ooh. in those eight hours, Nana That's reads right. her will. And nobody is happy with Nana's will. And so Ooh. not surprisingly, Nana ends up dead. Interesting. And in an homage to, you know, and then there were none, Agatha Christie, then someone else is dead, and then someone else is dead. And all this is waiting for the tide to go out so we can get off the island. Tide is high and I'm moving on. Yeah, okay. they can't move on. That was the scary part. <laughs> right. They can't move on. <laughs> Um, this is Frances Mays. This is nonfiction, A Place in the World. She did uh -huh. Under the Tuscan Sun, so people know her from that. And she has amazing wanderlust, but she's always looking for what it is to be feel like your home. Mm -hmm. So it's a place, and it's the people, it's the art, it's the books, it's the food. And so she defines home, and she basically comes back to the South. Uh -huh. She said she had a quarrel with the South, but she wanted to come home. Okay, nice. <coughs> and hey, this next one's sinkable. Um, boy, it, it looks like the Titanic or a big shipwreck there. It is a Titanic. Titanic, and it's a okay. new twist on the Titanic because uh -huh. it's not about the ship and why it sank and all the people. It's about the shipwreck itself and the people who are obsessed with oh, finding the wreck. Yes, I hear about that. I read about that in the news. <laughs> and the people uh -huh. who want it. it took them 70 years to ever bring anything up. And people claim some guy who worked in a pantyhose mm -hmm. factory, he claimed it was his shipwreck. <laughs> and somebody else claimed that it was theirs. And they have all these elaborate ways to go down there and, and start to salvage things. So it's sort of a funny story in a way. And the author is obsessed. And then he gets into this funny stuff. Not so funny, I guess. What if you were on a ship and it went down? What would happen to you? What does it look like down there? What would happen to your lungs? And so right. it kind of takes on all those funny perspectives of That's the 
nice, an interesting. Of an iconic shipwreck. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. And let's finish with a local author. Yes. We have a lot of them here. Uh, we do, it's something in the water in Jacksonville. And so this is Footprints by Jennifer Swanson, and mm -hmm. it's a children's nonfiction book, and it's about how everything in the world, we create footprints from the, they help us understand the past, the present, mm -hmm. and kind of predict the future. Oh, I like it. So it creates an environmental awareness that's just wonderful with great illustrations and lots of good facts. Very nice. And she'll have a big event at your store? She's going to do a book signing on a Saturday morning so that little kids can come and meet her and get their book signed. Always fun to see them smile. And it's always fun to see you here on First Coast Living. <laughs> I hey, like to smile here. Yeah, we have all these beautiful books and much more. Just head to our website and that's firstcoastliving.net.